Well, it's here. It hasn't even been a year since Mid Journey was released to the public, and now version 5 is better than anyone's wildest imaginations. Yes, it can do hands. Yes, it can do multiple figures, close up, mid ranged, and far away. Yes, it can generate a consistent character, in different lighting, from different angles, with different expressions. It can do all of this with beautiful, photorealistic, imaginative images that hardly take any work at all from a prompting perspective. And if that's true, what's the point of an advanced mid-journey guide anymore? AI has progressed so far that I can teach you photorealism in mid-journey by telling you to type two words before any prompt. Yes, two words. You don't believe me? Well, I can prove it. The words are photo of. You can generate a photo of an ice cream cone melting and dripping through the grates of a sewer drain. Sorry, I need to quit starting with a gross one. One of you needs to like go into the comments and just yell at me because otherwise I think this is gonna keep happening. We could do a photo of a young man with poofy blonde hair struggling to tie his shoes. That image would be a garbled mess in any other model, but here it looks great and especially when I only give you a couple seconds to look at it, it looks like a photograph. All right, I'm having fun. Let's do one more. How about we return to the fan favorite, my photo of Roger. He certainly looks photorealistic and miles more so than anything I did for him in version four. Look how cute he is while he's asking you to subscribe. Cool, right? But what gives? You're probably asking yourself, why would I make this big long video when the lesson here is that you can take two words and suddenly you're a master of photorealism. Is this video about to be a waste of time? Well, if you know me, you know I'm here to take mid-journey generations of photography to new depths and unlock skills you hopefully didn't even realize were possible. Skill in prompt engineering is no longer marked by the ability to generate images which are technically competent and visually coherent. That's because these tools have advanced so far that now anybody can do that much. Instead, prompt engineering is turning into the ability to have fine control over a model's output. It's the sense and the patience to gently guide the image AI into creating complex, specific, and beautiful artworks that otherwise could never be realized in a traditional medium. My goal in this video is to give you the tools to do exactly that. First things first, we need to define a framework so that you can easily keep track of what the words in your prompts are doing to your images. I promise you, this is cool and not boring, and it's also way easier than it used to be. In version 4, I needed to break up my prompts with these multi-prompt markers and weights to ensure I was generating exactly what I needed to. The reason was that you needed to fight to convince the model to generate something photorealistic but that meant referencing camera gear and settings, and if you weren't careful, suddenly your images would be full of photography equipment instead of focusing on your subject. That meant prompts got long, complicated, and rigid. Now, in version five, Midjourney has become way smarter. And what that means for your explanations of things like lighting and style is, well, they can be extremely simple. Consequently, so can your prompts. When you write a prompt, you need a subject, you need a style. If you care what the background is, you need a background. If you care how the lighting looks, you can explain the lighting. Same thing for the colors in your image, same thing for the mood. And if you have done that in the eyes of Midjourney, you have fully defined your artwork. And as we know, a fully defined artwork means Midjourney's model no longer needs to inject prompt engineering and change the image for you. Make sense? Let's do it. Pick a subject. We'll call her Becca. She's a young lady with long bleached blonde hair and with a joyful round face. Sorry, my bad. The prompt should probably be a photo of a young lady with long bleached blonde hair and with a joyful round face. Now, a background. She can be standing in front of a crumbling wall. And a style. I'll call this urban chic. That worked, it's good, but I don't think it changes the image quite enough. So 
I'll add a few details to this prompt and solidify the style. Again, you don't need nearly as many details as you used to. Version 5 is very smart, and it understands the style you're talking about. Just be specific, and ta-da, it looks great. Here, I've also written another styling prompt to define the lighting and mood. So here, we can add my prompt for twilight, and wow, suddenly the image looks gorgeous. What's cool is that in this format, we can break each of these down into slash prefer options. It's for subject, background, style, and atmosphere. This way, we get to define our subject once, and then try generating them with a ton of different and compelling combinations. We can take Becca, and then create the same portrait at sunset instead of twilight, or replace urban chic with high fashion. We can also do a fantasy portrait of her under what I call God Rays. The point is, you get to have tons of variations to mix and match all of these attributes until you land on something you love. You might have noticed that each of these dash dash somethings are slash prefer option set commands, each with a bunch of text associated with them. It would take you a monstrous amount of time to copy all these down for my video. Luckily, I'm your favorite YouTuber, and I've done something amazing. Just as before, in the description of this video, I am posting a paste bin with all of the slash prefer options I use in this video, plus more than two dozen extra. So if you add them to your mid-journey account by pasting the commands in, you can use them as well. They aren't complicated, but they do give you an excellent starting point to creating refined images. And then, you actually get another superpower. Madlib style, you can actually write a bunch of prompts that look like this. Slash prefer option, subject, background, high fashion, sunset, bokeh. And then, very simply, all you have to do is type out your prefer option command for your subject and your background and then you can try them in a bunch of different and refined styles simply by repasting a bunch of commands, which I also put in the paste bin. So let's give that a try too. Let's set our subject, slash prefer option, subject, then click tab into the value, a photo of a handsome owl person wearing glasses and a trench coat. Then we need to add a reasonable background. How about a slash prefer option set, option background, value in a dark and spooky forest with shadows peering in from behind the trees. Now I can grab these handy prompts and very simply run them all. Suddenly you have a style sheet full of refined images in a bunch of different styles, colors, lightings, moods, and perspectives. You can change the option for dash dash subject and dash dash background, then do it all over again with a completely different character straight out of your imagination. But we're not done. My pace spin is just a start. Hold on to something, and, or sit down, because I need to apologize. I haven't been completely honest with you. You know the 40-odd style hints I put in this astounding pace spin for you? The one you were so grateful for that you already clicked the like button without being asked? Thank you, by the way. Well, I didn't write any of them. They came directly out of ChatGPT, and as a special treat for watching this far, I'll tell you that within the first paste bin is a link to a second paste bin where I put the prompts I used to generate all of them. You're welcome. With these tools available to you and a bit of practice, you will become a master at augmenting your prompts so that you can turn anything you imagine into something mind-blowingly awesome. And to finally turn you into a master of mid-journey, I just need to leave you with three final tips. Number one, if you want to create a consistent character, you need to be specific. When writing a prompt for your subject, include all the details Midjourney will need to understand how that character looks. If you make your subject a cute guy, he will be different in every single scene you put him in. But if you add a ton of details and instead write, Alec, a young emo looking guy with flowing long blonde hair, a nose ring, chiseled jaw, and a wistful gaze, well, that character is going to look much more similar when you generate him again and again. Consistency is complicated, and I could do a whole video about generating consistent characters, but prompts like this will give you a much better shot at it than anything else. Ready for the next one? Tip number two. 
Never trust the order. Midjourney is smarter than it used to be, but it doesn't know everything. Midjourney still has problems with prompts that involve complex relationships. Take this. A white ball, wearing a green top hat, rolling on a black ramp, being chased by a purple pyramid. The colors, the objects, and their relationships are essentially randomized. Midjourney doesn't know what to do with it, and that's how it's designed. In some cases, it's a good thing. It means you can switch the order of these tags I've given you and not actually affect the outcome of the prompt. But it does cost you the ability to specifically define what part of the clown should be what color. Number three. This landscape is constantly evolving. In my opinion, Midjourney has been the best source of image generation basically since it came out and since I made a video on it. But if you want to be using these tools to create the best possible images, you need to stay aware of how AI is changing. Stable Diffusion has really cool developments all the time. There are free models popping up seemingly every week. Microsoft Designer, Adobe Firefly, there is a lot of news to cover and it's a lot of work to stay up to date. Now, you might think that this final tip is just a cleverly disguised plug to subscribe to me, but I have to break it to you. All that news, I don't cover it. There are some great channels that do. Matt Wolf, All About AI, uh, Matt Vid Pro are all excellent at sharing timely updates about this amazing tech. If you want to stay up to date, following them will be a great way to turn yourself from an amateur dabbling with Midjourney into an informed professional who is aware of all the goings on in this space. My goal with this channel is much more to help you understand and think about these concepts more deeply. Hopefully, I've been able to demystify some of the things that help you approach AI art from a position of agency and freedom. I hope you agree that Midjourney version 5 is a fantastic tool that is going to reshape the conversation over what's even possible from AI. But I have to add that this revolutionary improvement is nothing compared to what happened the day GPT-4 was released. If you don't believe me, you'll just have to make sure you watch my next video. See you there.